Hi, Roman Dasel here with another look at one of the uh, Middle-earth role-playing game modules. This one is called Angmar, the Land of the Witch King. This was released in 1982 by Iron Crown Enterprises with permission from Tolkien Enterprises, which uh, from Berkeley, California. This came out in 1982 and was the first full campaign module that Iron Crown Enterprises released for the Lord of the Rings for the Middle-earth role-playing game. This was a pretty cool module, a good start. I didn't get this till later on. I got this from eBay. It was one of the ones I was missing. Uh, they actually, this is the first edition. I bought the second edition, which was a lot bigger and had more things in it. And there's also a third edition one. But this one was pretty cool. It came with four major floor plans for castles. So you have the Castle of Karn Doom. You also got the Castle Morkake, Morkai Castle. Eldaner Castle, and a place called the Kargash, which was like a tower keep. It also had eight black and white maps, and it also came with a 16 by 20 inch full color double sided map sheet, which you can see in the, the map was pretty cool in all these games. As you can see, this one shows Angmar, the Northern Misty Mountains, parts of the Grey Mountains up there, and also Northern Rudar, and even Rivendell is in there. So it's a pretty good campaign map. Now with their campaign books, they always gave you the historical background. They gave you the flora and fauna, as well as the, the extraordinary creatures that lived in these places. Like in Angmar, there was trolls, giants, dragons. And it also gave you the peoples and cultures of Angmar. It also described the economics and the military system and the government. And then it goes into pol politics and power. So obviously this is Angmar. For those who never bothered to read the appendices and know nothing about Lord of the Rings, Angmar was created in 1300 of the, of the Third Age by the Witch King, one of the, the chief Nazgul, sent north by Sauron to establish a kingdom in the far north in order to destroy the Dúnedain kingdoms of Arthedain, Cardolan, and Rudar because the kingdom of Arnor had split up in 861 into three sister states. And they were constantly fighting each other. So Sauron saw opportunity in their weakness to just crush them one by one. Which is exactly what happened in the end. So the Witch King is there. He gathers an army of men and orcs. And then he, he allies with Rudar against Arthanin and Cardolan. And eventually corrupts Rudar so much that, he, that it's his by default. He destroys Cardolan in 1409. And then it takes him to 19 the 1970s of the third age to finally defeat Arthedain. So this book goes into the Witch King. It describes his backstory. Then it gives a, a template of his generals at the time and the military. And it talks about the various military units, his own personal guard units, rangers, trackers, patrols. And it comes with some pretty cool uh, pictures. It gives you places and notes the capital of Karn Doom, which if you read the book, you know that uh, Mary mentions that one in the Barrow Downs after he gets captured by the Barrow White and Tom Bombadil saves him. He he claims that the men of Karn Doom had worsted him in, at night. So it gives you an interior and exterior of all this. You flip the map open, map around. So when you flip the map around, you got... An, the map of Karn Doom itself and the defensive structure. Three sets of walls plus a mountain to go through, which is one reason why Arthedain was never able to mount an offensive to capture it. It wasn't until the Gondorians arrived. It wasn't until 1975 when the Gondorians came. They had the power to destroy the Witch King and also destroy all of his major keeps and holds. So Karn Doom was the capital of Angmar. And then it gives you the, the floor plans. So you could actually try and sneak your way in or whatever, be a spy type idea and go through the actual and go through the actual fortress of the, the interior of the fortress. Also had some beautiful drawings of an out, outer keep. One of the border keeps, Mordecai, and describes who's in these keeps. Had another, a village of Kuska. 
So it gives you a broad range. You get a major fortresses, you have minor fortresses, you have keeps, and little villages. This one also had where you could actually design your own outpost, design a castle, supplies for an outpost and castle, herb lore. Had a bunch of different stuff in here. It had the master military table, which was kind of pretty cool. This is one of the earlier versions. The later versions have a more detailed ones. And it gives you all the statistics. It also gave you all the uh, NPCs, non-playing characters. So all the commanders of the fortresses and anybody important there. Siege equipment, what you could use. And then it gives you some suggested adventures. They don't have really... This book never really had a lot of uh, specific adventures like some of the later books do. And then it gives you a, a point at other times. Now Middle-earth role-playing had a specific timeline. They always started at 1640, which is in the Third Age, which is just after the Great Plague has passed. They do that because it's at the time where the forces of good and the forces of evil are, are even. They're at even strength. Up until that point, the forces of good were, in the, were still pretty strong and pretty ascendant. After the Great Plague, that's when the forces of evil started slowly and surely start taking over things. All of Arthedain, the Balrog appearing in Mor Moria, and the death of the last king of Gondor all served to really to really set up the stage for Lord of the Rings. So overall this is a really good this was a pretty cool campaign book. I didn't use this one, I used my second edition which gave more information and had a slightly better graphics. But it was definitely a great start to the role playing system. And I, I would recommend playing this. This was something to play in the 80s. I thought it was better than Dungeons and Dragons because it had more structure. And I guess the, the closest thing to a modern day system of this now would be uh, Forgotten Realms. Anyway, that's all I have for now. And until next time, I'm out of here.